I have a lot of Game Boy games coming in for battery replacements in the next month. I think there's like 42 of them. Of those 42, I think like 20 or so uh, have batteries that are still alive enough to keep the save data alive. And uh, the owner just wants it replaced before that battery dies and before they lose all their data. So I wanted to make an easy way of doing this. So uh, in this video, I'm going to see if I can make a device that will allow me to keep this Game Boy game powered up without using a Game Boy. I have done that in the past and just sort of like streamline the battery replacement process because if I'm doing 40 of them I want to be able to get them done in like an hour which I think I could do with this device in mind. Now I do know that there are um, alternatives to this idea. I know the GB operator is a thing and there's other things like it um, but I don't need that. I don't want the uh, PC interface. I don't want the ability to save someone else's data and dump it back into the cart. I want to just make this as fast as possible and I this is the schematic for the board I want to design. It's not a whole lot, but it's also not that descriptive. Um, we just have a bunch of squares and rectangles. And that is mainly because I downloaded these three parts from Mauser, and their symbols are always just squares and rectangles. I could change that, but I really don't want to. Uh, this is our cart reader up here. That's a part I designed in Eagle. And um, we can switch back and forth between schematic and board view to kind of give a better idea of what we're looking at as I explain it. So switch back to schematic and we'll just walk through everything. Uh, this is our USB-C port. It'll supply power for the cart that's getting its battery changed. This is a, um, a double pull, double throw switch. It'll allow us to toggle between Game Boy and Game Boy Advance voltages. Uh, so that way we can change both. Um, to my knowledge, there's not a whole lot of Game Boy Advance games that use a save battery, but there are a few uh, based on the limited research I did. So I wanted to accommodate that if I ever came across one. And to accommodate the different voltage, we have this 3.3 volt regulator. Game Boy games use 5 volts, Game Boy Advance games use 3.3 volts, and that's what this is right here. Um, this double pull, double throw switch throws whatever voltage based on whatever game you select to this pin up here on the cart reader. This is our positive input, and um, it also turns on and off the 3.3 volt regulator, so that way it's not always on if you are switched to Game Boy mode. Down here we have a few capacitors for the 3.3 volt regulator, two resistors for the USB-C port to enable 5 volt output, and over here we have a status uh, indicator circuit. Just an LED and a resistor as well as this resistor over here which I'll explain in a second. So the idea behind this is to um, plug in a Game Boy card, send current through it, and have it grounded through this pin right here through this resistor and through this LED, thus turning on the LED while being grounded. So the only way this LED turns on is if the Game Boy game is making good contact. I felt like this was an important indicator to have so that way you're not defeating the purpose of this overall project because you want to make sure your Game Boy game is fully inserted and getting power before you remove that battery. And I think this is a good indicator to have. However, I don't know why I decided to throw in this right here, this R4, which if we switch over to board view, is this resistor right here, or just the footprint from one rather. It says short if you're not using an LED. So if you didn't want an indicator for whatever reason, you could just throw a blob of solder across that and um, have current grounded the normal way. It'll just go straight to ground instead of going through the resistor and LED. Uh, I, like I said, I don't know why I threw that in, but I felt like it was just something that I should throw in. I would recommend using the LED though, um, but if you don't want an LED for whatever weird reason, blob that out and you're good to go. I think that's everything, so let's go ahead and send these boards out to PCB Way and start building them. Since we're on the subject of PCBs, this video is sponsored by PCB Way. They offer a variety of PCB services ranging from standard PCB to rigid flex. Simply upload your Gerber files for a quick build time and amazing quality PCBs. In addition to PCBs, they also offer CNC, injection molding, and 3D printing services, which I'll definitely be using in the future. Definitely check out their website, and thank you so much PCB Way for sponsoring my channel. And now that we got our PCBs, we can go ahead and stuff them with all the components. Thank you PCB Way for sponsoring my channel. Let's go ahead and solder this guy up.
So now that it is fully assembled, I want to make sure we are getting the correct voltages before I test it with a gain. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this USB-C cable and then probe for first 5 volts because the switch is in the, five, uh, the GB position and we see 5.2 there which is good so now if I throw it to GBA we should see 3.3 because it's turning on that 3.3 volt regulator as well as switching it so should see 3.3 which we do perfect so now what I want to do is plug in a game this is a Donkey Kong that I fixed a while back that I was told to keep so if I plug in this game and apply power the voltage or the current should go through the cartridge and be grounded through this LED and the LED is lighting up. Look at that. So the current detection works. Go ahead and kill my overhead lights. And you can see that little green LED. So cool. So it does work. And now for the real test. Unfortunately, I don't have any Game Boy games that require battery swaps yet. Um, they're all still coming. Uh, but we can play around with this game right here. This has a save file on it. I'm just going to plug it in, verify the save is there. Which it is, we got the save file right here. So now what I'm going to do is give it a test. I'm going to plug the game in and lift this battery to uh, simulate changing the battery, if that makes sense. Alright, so now I'm going to lift the tab of the battery. Now it's important to note that there is current running through the game, so you want to make sure you're capable of doing this before you do it. Because um, ideally you don't want power applied when you're doing something, but if you want to save the battery, or save the save files, then it's kind of necessary. Um, if you don't want to use the GB operator. So I'm going to lift this battery tab right here. Try to do it. So we got the LED on, and I'm just gonna, I forgot I can formal coded this, so I'm gonna have to burn through that. So, shouldn't be too bad though. So and I'm just gonna lift this battery, and just kind of give it a second. So now, there is no external battery hooked up, um, so technically the save files should be deleted if this doesn't work. If it does work, we reinstall the battery, the save file should still be there. So now let's solder this back on. And pretend we changed it. Not the prettiest solder job, but it's not the point. The LED is still on. So now we should see those save files still there. And you do. Cool, so this works. I figured it would because it's a simple idea, but I just wanted to make sure. So now, um, to prove that lifting the battery or removing the battery or having a dead battery messes up the saves, I'm just going to go ahead and do this without it being plugged in. And um, destroy that 20 minutes I'll never get back playing Donkey Kong. So now we should have no save files. And we do not. And um, to further prove that you need an external power source, I'm just going to go ahead and tack it back on, burn my finger in the process because flesh is the best heat sink. Um, and now plug it in again. And we should still have no save files because the battery was removed. And just like that, no save files. So, that is good enough for me to prove that this thing works. That is really cool. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had fun, and I hope you found it useful. I know I did, because I will get a lot of use out of this guy in the next month or so when all those Game Boy games come. Um, thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. Be sure to follow my Instagram, where I'll be giving away a few of these. I'll be giving away, I think, three of these on my Instagram. I think that's all I have left. Uh, it may be a blank PCB. I'm not 100% sure yet. i got to check my inventory. But uh, 
follow my Instagram below, and I will see you next time. Thank you again for watching.